before you can install node wait that's wrong <laughs> let me start again before you can install uh, phone gap or cordova you need uh, node.js uh, just head over to node.js.org slash download and download whichever you need because uh, we're doing this on the Mac I download the Mac installer but I've already got it so that's, uh, that's the first step out of the way the next thing you need to do if you're doing this at the command line is to open terminal I'll just drag this terminal on here I've made it nice and big so you can see what I'm typing uh, and then you're going to type in here n pm which is the node package manager which should have installed when you installed node install uh, let's make this a bit bigger so you can see there you go install g card over now you can write here phone gap depending on what you want to use uh, the difference is as far as I'm aware is Cordova is the Apache project which um, that is be there's the basic Apache project for doing this stuff but PhoneGap is Adobe's version that's built on top of Cordova uh, I think there's a few slight differences uh, that Adobe have added to it um, they've got a service called Adobe Build which I think is going to be more integrated into Cordova or well, into PhoneGap it won't be in Cordova. Um, I like just doing Cordova because I like like the. I don't really want to get tied into all Adobe stuff. If you're looking for help online, help for phone gap stuff usually works with help for Cordova stuff. So you can, if, if there's something you can't do for some reason, you can search phone gap help, and uh, more often than not, it'll work for Cordova. Uh, so that's installed now. That is, it'll go away and do all this stuff, um, and you get the prompts again. And the next thing you want to do is create a project. So you want to find somewhere where you want the project to be. Um, I'll create a new f uh, directory on my desktop. I think uh, so. I'll change to the desktop uh, directory. And let's see. Uh, make directory I'll create a directory called for example projects so now you want to create a project so let's, uh, let's clear this right so you type create no no don't that's wrong you type Cordova create uh, and then so this will create your project and then it wants some arguments off you so it wants the path name so I'll call this uh, hello world <coughs> and then what it, you need is an ID uh, and the I IDs uh, they kind of like reverse domain so for me uh, I'll put I've got a website, Pay the Rabbit. So this is kind of like a reverse domain ID. So say you've got a domain that's Bob Smith. You can call it Hello World dot Bob Smith dot com. Doesn't you know? Doesn't really matter. Um, but as long as it's like a, the reverse domain style package name ID, and then the name of the project. So let's call it Hello World. Uh, that. Ah, so there's an error here because I didn't put a space in between create and hello world. It's quite hard to see because of the new line. So it creates that. If I look at the stretcher now, I've got uh, I've got a new directory called hello world. Uh, and if I bring up uh, Finder, I just grab Finder. There you go, you can see on my desktop I've got all this crap. <laughs> and then I've got a project called Hello World. Uh, the www folder is where all your you know, index is the index page that will load. Uh, well, by default, index is the index page that will, that will load when your uh, app starts, but you can change that. 
Uh, won't go into this now, but you can get out the idea. You think you could you should put your JS in JavaScript and all that not all that kind of stuff. But what you need to do, this one here, this folder here, platform is empty. Now what will go in there is a bunch of different directories um, that help to build your project to work on different platforms. And to do this, you go back to the command line. Uh, so say, for example, I want to build an Android project. It's very easy, just uh, change into the directory of the project. Again, I'll clear this so you can just see what's going on. Um, and then you just type code over platform platform <laughs> add and then the platform you want to add. Uh, you can go to the documentation to have a have a, a list of them. But I know Android's one, uh, iOS is one. I'm going to type Android now. There's also one for <coughs> excuse me for BlackBerry, uh, and there's also one for Windows Mobile. Is there? Uh, you can go and have a look anyway, but I'll just add Android for now. So it does a bunch of stuff. If I have a quick look in that platform directory, got Android now. So say you go away and you code uh, your project, this is where you mainly be working. Uh, if you try to open this in your browser, It says connecting to device, uh, and it will just be froze there. And that's because if you go and look at the code, which I won't do now, uh, it's waiting for something called device ready for you, so for your Android device to, to be ready, uh, which will never happen if you're in a browser. So there's a lot of things that won't happen because you're not connected to a mobile phone. So to you might want to test it on a mobile phone or an emulator. So to do that. Uh, I've gone and lost my terminal. <clears throat> if you want to build the project on a mobile phone, uh, to build it, you just write code over build. Um, this builds your project. And then, if you want to run it on something, after you type in card over build, after it's done on this, you type card over run. Uh, this seems to be taking longer than normal. I don't know if that's because it's the first time or maybe it just takes this long and <coughs> maybe I'm not <laughs> not used to it. Yeah, but after this is running, then type card over run. And then once you type card over run, it'll. Um, it will do two things. First, it will look to see. <coughs> actually, code over run might do code over build, but it will look to see if you've got an Android device connected. And if it does, it will run your program on the Android device. And it will do more than I just showed you then, because uh, it can access the APIs and stuff that it can't access in the browser. Um, if you've not got an Android phone connected, it will try and open an emulator. So if you've already set up an emulator with your Android SDK, I can't remember what it's called now, there's um, a little bit of the Android SDK that lets you create emulators and whatnot, then it'll load up in your default uh, emulator. If you need any help, just type code over the help and just a command comes up. If you've got this set of a reasonable um, a usable font, not a huge one, you'll be able to work out what's going on. Uh, so, see the rest of the commands. So you can actually pick the emulator when you put that over here. So, yeah, just play around with it. It's, it's quite, you know, if you've got, once you use phone gap instead, it's very, very similar. Um, I prefer. Cordova because of, even though they're practically the same, phone gaps got extra stuff in um, and I don't want to get stuck into some of that extra stuff because I think it might depend on Adobe services. There's a well, the big thing that phone gap adds is the build service, uh, which is 
Adobe build. Which is a like a, a hosted service to to build your applications, and it's 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 handy because uh, if you want to build an Android app, you have to mess around. If you want to put on the store, you have to mess around with certificates and that kind of thing. Whereas this will do all that for you. But I do. I don't want to do this at the moment. Uh, maybe further down the line, I might switch to PhoneGap. Um, but I don't want to use this and I don't want to get stuck into having to use it which I don't think you do at the moment but you never know, you might add more stuff to phone gap that gets you stuck into this world anyway, I hope that was useful